To talk about the second piece of code signed by various political parties in Abuja today, we go live to Abuja studios where the Catholic Bishop of the Sokoto Diocese, Reverend Father Matthew Kuka, joins us to discuss this. You're welcome to the News at 10. Thank you very much. Bishop Kuka, you were part of the distinguished members who supervised the signing of this piece of code. From the body language of the politicians who put pen to paper, do they appear willing to accept the outcome of the election, no matter where it swings? Well, I mean, the, you know what Shakespeare said, there's no art to find the mind's construction in the face. But I think that uh, at this particular moment, when every minute and every second counts, uh, the very fact that the president himself was gracious enough to extend the period of time that he allocated for this program so just very clearly the level of their seriousness and that they've, all the other political uh, all the other presidential contestants uh, that they will break uh, take a break from their campaigns uh, just to be with us he says i mean we couldn't get any better signal than that to suggest very clearly that um, the people who appended their signature really and truly are serious about what they've done and talking about their campaigns a lot of people have cried foul because some of them have been laced with a lot of hate speeches. So what are the assurances that this exercise can guarantee peace after this process? I think in fairness, you know, what, we, what, what the, the politicians did on the 11th of December, namely the signing of uh, their own commitment, the first accord that was signed was to commit the contestants themselves uh, to avoiding hate speeches, uh, avoiding inciting comments and so on. And I think in fairness, you know, the, these campaigns have been, relatively speaking, uh, peaceful. Uh, at the level of inter-party or intra-party, uh, uh, you know, grievances and so on, we, we, we haven't seen much in terms of uh, the kind of clashes that have always characterized uh, politics at this period of time. Uh, so we can say very clearly that I think, in fairness, you know, the, 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 the contestants really try to keep to the principles of, of the accord. This second accord commits them to accepting the results of the elections, again with the proviso that the elections are seen to be free, fair and credible. And this is why the presence of the international community and the international observers is so very much welcome. And the fact that I think... You know, from what we are hearing, Nigerians are increasingly becoming very, very alert. And this is so fundamental that in the final analysis, they are the gatekeepers of these promises. It's okay, the politicians can make the commitment, but we are the ones that must hold their feet to the fire, to the promises that they have made. So I think in fairness, we look forward to them keeping, being men, you know, men of honor, uh, men and women of honor. We believe that uh, their word should be their bond. But does the National Peace Committee have the power to call them to order just in case, and their supporters as well, if they go out of line because some people think that these peace pacts have little or no significance? Um, you know, the Peace Committee doesn't have the kind of powers that uh, Nigeria seem to assign to it. Uh, we, all we have is a moral voice, and we're just a symbol of the aspirations and hopes of Nigerians for, for, for elections to be in the way and manner that the rest of the international community and everybody else in other parts of the world have come to take for granted, namely a routine rite of passage uh, through which ordinary citizens are able to uh, stake their claim and vote candidates of their choices. Now, we've not suspended the existing rules of the land. So when people commit offenses, uh, well, they, they, the relevant government agencies are still, you know, are still there. And that is why there's been so much hue and cry about the security agencies. Our hope is that uh, the security agencies themselves uh, will be sufficiently neutral. They're going to sign all kinds of agreements, but in the final analysis, it is just important to make the point that, uh, again, we go back to what President Jonathan said, namely that each and every one of us, whether you are contesting elections, nothing and absolutely nothing should be, more, should be so serious that it demands the spilling of the blood of any Nigerian. So, we hope that uh, the relevant agencies will do the best that they can do. INEC has already assured Nigerians that it is fully prepared to do their job. So all we can do is, um, you know, hope and pray, you know, that everything goes well and that people who vote know that they have to live to tell their story. There is no need casting a vote and, and, you know, risking your life. And at the end of the day, people win the elections, I mean, those who win the elections win the elections and you end up in the grave. 
Our hope and prayer is that everyone who goes out on this day will come back safely to their family. A big amen to that. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure speaking with you on the News at 10, Reverend Father Matthew Cooker. Thank you very much for having me.